In this video, I'll be walking through the installation of the Active Directory connector server for OpenIDM. This consists of three pieces, the .NET connector server, the AD connector DLLs, and finally, the AD provisioner file. First, you will need to download the connector server and the connector files. You can get both of these from the following URL, openicf.forgerock.org slash downloads.html. I will provide the link in the video description. With the files downloaded to my server, let's install the connector server by using the wizard-based installer, followed then by the AD connector. After double-clicking the installer file, let's follow the steps to finish the installation. Click Next through the first screen. I will then select Custom to show all the installation options, which is only the core server feature. Of course, this feature will be fully installed. Uh, before moving on, make sure to make note of the installation directory, which is C Program Files Identity Connector Connector Server, as we will need this later. On this next screen, click Next, and then finally click Finish. At this point, the server is ready for the connector to be installed. Using Windows Explorer, browse to the install directory and do the same in the command line. Next, open the zipped AD connector file you downloaded earlier. Select all the files and copy them into the connector server directory in the explorer. There are some files to be overwritten, so make sure you overwrite them in the destination folder. With the DLLs available to the server now, let's find the service and restart it using the Windows Services tool. The service is called Open ICF Connector Server. Once we find it, we see that it is running, so let's stop it and then start it again. When it comes back up, flip over to the command line and set the key. Do this by running the connectorserver.exe with the set key option and a password you like. As always, make sure you use a strong password. For this demo system, I am using a password of password only because this is a demo system. Never would that be used in a production environment. So now we hit enter to submit the command. And just to be safe, I will restart this OpenICF connector service one more time to make sure that all changes were applied. When the server is back up, the installation is pretty much complete. The last thing to do is to check the Windows firewall settings to ensure our ports are open. I will add a new rule for this program and the firewall will automatically allow its traffic over the default port of 8759. At this point, our work on the Windows server is pretty much complete. We can take one final step to make sure that the service is listening on the correct port. We can do this with the use of the netstat command. When we get the results back, let's make sure that 8759 is listening. And with this, we have completed the installation and configuration of the OpenICF connector server. Thank you for watching my tutorial and be sure to stick around for part two, where we complete the setup by installing the connector on OpenIDM.